As always, this video is sponsored by the good people at, well, you. Let's begin. If you want a game where you're going to be slay chaining a murder mile of enemies and game boss across a series of lifeless corpses on your way to some weird looking alien level, well, I wouldn't get this one because it's got none of that. But what it does have is the story of a man and his shadow torn apart, leaving one of them chasing after the other like some redneck trying to catch up to a prowler motorhome after they forgot to put the parking brake on and trying to consistently get back in. Today I'm bringing you the review for Skim because it looked like something I wanted to cover. A platforming game coming out soon for Nintendo Switch, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. As Skim, you simply need to get back to your character. A platformer in context, but more of a physical narrative in combination with an abstract, emotional journey throughout the rest of it. More reviews coming to you as we get into the heavy release schedule, including Star Wars Outlaws, Assassin's Creed Shadows, and some premieres only on this channel. Make sure to subscribe. I sat down and started to play Skim, and I admit, for a while I was fairly confused. Was it just a boy in a shadow, broken apart? Was it some alien thing possessing streetlights? Why was time moving forward the way that it does in the game? Why did the color palette change from time to time to time? But then, slowly it came together. You're leaping into other shadows, from and through humans, and dogs and cats and ducks and walls, lights, sidewalks, bike stands, all in a peaceful rhythm, with no stress. Sort of. Because as you're playing and you time shadow skips from bike to bike or across a sunny sidewalk, if you end up in the sun or you end up and miss time a jump, you fry and you get sent back to the last safe place that you rested, that's where the stress starts to come in. As you move through the level, sometimes time will pass, other times it feels like you're following that human and you're just one step behind them, trying to catch up. As the levels progress, they also grow larger, each camera zoom that shows where your ultimate goal stretches out in front of you from each level goes farther and farther until you start to wonder if it's even possible for you to get there as this little blob of nothingism. But Skim isn't about any kind of crushing difficulty, in fact it's not that difficult at all. It's more of a journey game, picking up little bits of narrative pieces as you go and seeing other people live their lives as you focus on getting to the life of the person that left you behind. That also means it can easily fall right into that, well, okay, it's not for me kind of section in the gameplay categories, as it's neither incredibly complex nor filled with collectibles. But what it is, is curious, almost in game form. A title that as I continued to play it, I wanted to see further and further and see if there was something going on with the story proper. Now, when it comes to the control here, it's initially quite simple. When using the controller, one button's for jump and the bumpers let you swing the viewpoint of the level around in quarters. So you can see the jumps or better vantage points you may need and you may have to do at a different place. While on the other hand, X lets you interact with the world, causing ducks to quack, cars to turn on lights and other activities that can move you farther in the game world or just find a secret through some of the levels. When landing in something shadow, you have a limited control with that button in some way, and I do mean limited, other than drones and a few other things, including the humans you consistently leap into. Most of it involves doing things like turning traffic signals on and off, little mini puzzles of navigation, bouncing on old clothesline wires and causing forklifts to raise up and down, always trying to get that shadow just a little bit longer so you can leap from it to another spot of safety. But it's also best to be warned about skim. It has an odd mechanic in its leaping. It's not only pressure sensitive, but your shadow only has two real jumps, with the first being longer than the second, and if you wait too long or get caught out away from the shadows, about a quarter of a second in, the game resets you back to a checkpoint. And especially at first, it can be hard to ascertain how far that second jump may take you, and if the game's flexible system that magnetically sucks you into the next shadow will actually work or leave you sitting in the sun only to die and have to go back a bit. Luckily, no matter how far you go back, it's not a great deal. Despite any issues I had, there's a feeling to the game that's really hard to match, and certainly one that reminds me of other exploratory and focused games, something like Limbo, perhaps. There are a couple secrets to find as well, and items to locate, and sometimes you need a couple of them to get basically through the level. Multiple ways to get from one spot to the other in some of the larger levels is enjoyable, but this is more of a story-style game, an art piece versus something delving deep into any kind of platforming mechanics chaos. So don't expect it to be ultra-complex. It does have those moments, though. Some of them are very unique, but don't go in expecting Crash Bandicoot. I lost my Shadow Edition. Graphically, though, I do have to say this is a game for me. For better or worse, when you begin to see everything as a tool, when shadows, so ethereal normally and remarkably normal, turn into platforms and the game starts to twist sideways, skewing your perspective from seeing items and their shadows to seeing shadows and the real selves being reversed in the meaning, where the shadows become the solid part of a world. It may take a moment or it may take a couple minutes. 
But once it happens, you begin to imagine platforming games like Sonic or Crash, and suddenly if those places where you could leap were only the shadows of boxes or the ring, it would be a completely different twist. And that is how Skim plays out. It's excellent, but it's also, at least at first, a bit disconcerting and a little clumsy. Then you get down into the later levels, when Shadow is playing across grid lines and moving drones spinning across the surface of wide open spots, has you depositing your little Shadow self onto moving factory lines like old Disney cartoons where they were hammering out World War II shells, and that can get nerve-wracking, but I liked it. The game has this oddness about it, one bit inviting, and the next bit you're wondering if the devs have some deep-seated hatred for 90-degree lines. I love the look though, every single location has a spot to it, and it makes you squint and think to yourself, I can probably make it, and just like a cat before they run across the street, you settle down for a moment, and then you make that leap, and yep, splat, you're probably dead. But the pastel colors really do help the atmosphere, it's tremendous, like finding a huge shed for bicycles and realizing it's filled with other shadows all waiting out the burning heat of the day like jelly-shaped vampires, and then you slip out into the shadows and cross across the level in a different form. Obviously, the game runs fine on almost anything with no real issues hitting super high frame rates regardless of the CPU and GPU. While it does have some moving bits, for the most part, Skim is about offering a look versus any kind of requirements when it comes to high performance. Musically, the game is very good, usually. There's a couple tracks that are a bit forgettable, more with a beep boop kind of forgettable ditty that fades from memory as quick as the level goes by, but one or two gets straight into the earworm category, filtered through this synth filter just soft enough to not be harsh and a couple levels of arpeggios playing out to keep it either complicated enough or feeling complicated enough to consistently keep your mind connected to it. Really just an enjoyable soundtrack throughout it all, and it channels nostalgia when it needs to, and a little bit of hectic feeling at other places when it needs to do that. When it comes to the voice, there's no voice, so let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about Fun Factor. Skim isn't fun at first, it's about learning and exploring, it's about figuring out ways to get across a level, and if you're left out in the sun and killed, you start back over and the game leaves it up to you to take the levels on as you will, even though they're not hugely freeform. Some bigger ones later on are. At least so much in the speed, I felt myself trying to combo the bounces though on my own. Completely changed the way the game felt, though the game had actually no requirement for it. Moving between slats and a fence or from a dog's shadow to a child's to a piece of lawn furniture at the highest speed just because I wanted to see if I could. Next I found myself exploring to find a collectible. And while I never wish for more collectibles in most games, I do wish that Skim had a bit more surprises in that category because it would have been nice to have had a little bit more exploration here, just a couple more items that you might have got from doing so. I have to hand it to the devs though, I found myself willing this little dude across gaps, sidecar and through the shadows of drones that whiz banged around levels and kept wanting to see the end goal no matter what. As each little bit of a cutscene plays out and shows some of the life of the character that you're chasing, as it builds up and builds in and loads into the next level, you just consistently find yourself sitting down and going, yeah, I'll just try this next one, just for a second. Also, the story it tells is just vague enough to make you want to know more and put your own impressions on what might be happening. I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, deep, deep sale, or never touch rating scale. The game's about five to seven hours and around 20 to 25 bucks, depending on which platform you get it and what sales you jump into. Now, I personally enjoyed the hell out of this. It's a weird warp platformer. It offered a good romp for the cost without eliciting a great deal of frustration but offering enough mystery and gameplay to be worth it. Each level has its own feel, like it's a mini story going on within it, and while you're never quite sure if that's true, the story it tells and the pull you feel each time you're close to finding your human, only to have that bastard leap into a moving truck and drive off across town, is the addictive pull that I needed to actually work through the game. But it doesn't do itself any favors with occasional imprecise feeling movement, and luckily that doesn't come up that often, but you will notice it and the color palettes simply may not entice some gamers, just the art style overall. A game that's going to appeal to a selected kind of gamer, luckily, I'm in that group, and I would say it's well worth getting. That's it for me, more reviews coming as I said before, heavy release schedule coming up, Star Wars Outlaws, Assassin's Creed Shadows, a bunch of smaller indie games, some more reviews this week. Peace out, check out the patron.